A macro is a collection of actions used to run a set task. And in this example, I want to create a macro that will open up my contact form. I know, you could argue and say, can't you just come over here and double click on it to open it up? Well, in this database design view, you can because you can see the navigation pane. But if you had another design, you won't be able to get to it right readily. And, you know, how you want to set it up, maybe a button in a window here, a form that they can click on to open up another form. In any case, that's not the point, at least initially. The point is, is I want to introduce you to a macro by doing something simplistic. And then in the next couple of training videos, we'll build upon this and do something a bit more challenging. So let's go ahead and close out of here. And to create a macro that will open up my contact form, come up here, click on the Create tab, go to the Macros and Code group, and click on the big Mac. Click on them, and there you go. So to find a list of actions that we can choose from, either click on the drop-down arrow, and there you go. You can go ahead and choose one, and well, adds it. Let's go ahead and remove it. Or you can come in here and just start typing, add, well, there you go, add contact from Outlook. That's an import. In any case, if you don't know anything about Outlook, here's a quick plug. Watch my Outlook training videos. Let me go ahead and hit the Escape key. So you can choose your actions from the list here or over in the Action Catalog Task pane, which if you cannot see because it's gone, then you can come up here on the Design tab and click on Action Catalog to appear, deselect it to disappear, reselect it to appear. And you've got your actions that are in groups here like Data Import, Export, click on it to expand and there's the add contact from Outlook and to add it over here you can go ahead and double click it adds it and then to get rid of it or you can come over here click and drag and then to get rid of it and you can also come up here and do a search an instant search like add well there you go filters so we can go ahead and double click to add it and then we'll get rid of it and let's go ahead and clear our search and collapse that now the field that I want to use doesn't appear in the action list. It's one of those extra actions that, well, Microsoft considers unsafe, but yet it still includes it in the all actions. Well, as you can see up here, show all. Let me deselect the action catalog. So these lightning bolts that you see here are actions. And the ones you see over here where it says show all, you see that yellow yield sign? That means of all the actions, it has a total of 70 that are trusted and 20 that aren't. Those that aren't are like, well, untrusted. And so when you show all actions, you're going to be using some that Microsoft doesn't trust. And so by default, Access lists the 70 trusted actions that will run, even if the content has not been trusted. In other words, you can set up your Trust Center settings to disable all macros, but it'll still run these macros that only contain the 70 trusted actions. So you may want to check your Trust Center settings, and you can do that by coming up here and clicking on the File tab going backstage down to Options, and there's Trust Center. Select that, come over here, click on Trust Center Settings, and select your macro setting, and here we go. So even if you have them disabled completely without notification, those 70 trusted actions will still run. But the other 20, like my echo code that I want to use, it won't run unless I allow it to run. So I can disable macros with notification to say, hey, look, you know, your macros aren't going to run. Those that aren't trusted are those actions, as opposed to no notification, it just doesn't run. Or disable all macros except digitally signed macros, which it's not digitally signed. Or enable all, which isn't recommended because it could be dangerous. Well, I'm creating the database. I know what I'm doing, and so I'm safe. But, you know, if you get a database from somebody else, they're like, here, open this, open that up, and, you know, maybe there's somebody you don't trust. That's the whole purpose of it, so it doesn't destroy your computer. Or maybe you do it inadvertently. You're poking around and typing in things and creating macros, and who knows. So to keep yourself safe, you may not want to enable them, but I'm going to do it for me, because I trust me, and I want to be able to run those not trusted action, the Echo. Let's go ahead and click Okie Dokie, so let's go ahead and enable all. And we can bring up our action catalog again. So come up here, we can type in echo. And again, it's not listed because I don't have all my actions shown. So let's go ahead and delete that. Click on show all, including the ones that it doesn't trust. But then why would access put something that it doesn't trust into access? Well, if you know what you're doing here, you should be fine, like I do. Echo, there, type it in, it finally pulls up. And of course, let me hit the escape key. You can do it there or come over here as the macro commands, and for something more visual, there you go. Here's one that's not trusted, here's one that's not trusted. In any case, let's go ahead and double click to add it. Now when I add it, 
you can hover over it and get the details and it says it hides or shows the results of a macro while it runs. So to exaggerate to make a point, if I had like 70 actions down below and I run the macro, do you want to see it execute all those actions or you just want the end result of all those actions? So if it's on, you'll see it execute. Double click. Let's go ahead and come in here and say no. I don't want to see it execute all the actions and I'm only going to have like basically one action below that, but hey, I want to introduce it to you. So the next action that I want to add is, you go ahead and click in here, OP, there we go, open form. Oh, that's nice. Hit the tab key and we get a few more details. It says, okay, what's the name of the form that you want to open? Well, let me click on the drop down arrow and it's going to be my contact form. And then how do you want to view it? You want it in the form view, design view, print preview. We'll keep it simple, the form view. And then you have extra fields you can cover, like enter a filter to apply you got a filter name, a where condition, which we'll cover later on, data mode. You can just go ahead and hover over it and read more about it to see what we need to do here and if it's something that you want to use. Other than that, let me go ahead and click off. And now let's learn how to add a comment or comments. Maybe you want to add some explaining what you're doing back here. You know, for somebody else or maybe in a year, you come back and you're like, what in the heck was I doing? So you got some comments to read. Let's go ahead and it's an action. Type in comment. There you go. Hit the tab key. Opens up the comment box. And this comment's going to be for the echo, explaining what that does. Hide the results of the macro until it is finished. And then to add another comment, well, you can do it that way. You know, click in here, type in COM, or come over here in the action catalog. And there you go. Comment under the program flow. Double click. And it collapses that one. So you can see it right there. And let's type this one in for the second action what that does opens up the contact form and form view go ahead and click off of it and if you need to make any changes click on it and click inside of it and then you can start typing i mean it looks spooky when you click off and you click on it you're like where in the heck did it go well you have to click one more time to get inside to see what's in there okay now for me when i've got comments i think it's nice if i have the comments just above the section or area or in this case action that I'm commenting about so you can do it one of a couple of ways you can either go ahead and click on the up arrow and move it up and then go ahead and click off it collapses and there you go to hide the results of the macro till it's finished the echo and then this comment you can go ahead and click in it and then over to the right hand side you can click and drag and you see that red line wherever that goes and you let go that's where it ends up and click off and nice and one last thing here is that when you hover over one of these actions, you can go ahead and click on it to collapse it so you just see the name of it and not everything else that's tied to it. You can do it individually and collapse them, or you can come up here on the Design tab in the Collapse and Expand, and you can expand all and collapse all, and that makes it cleaner here. And of course, you hover over it to expand it individually. And then finally, we better save our macro, take it for a test drive, make sure it works. Let's come up here and click on save. And my three letter prefix for the macro is MCR. And we'll just say contact form or opens up the contact form. Whatever works best for you, click okie dokie. And it adds it over here in the navigation pane where it displays all the access objects. And well, if you can't see it, make sure that you click on the drop down arrow and it's set to all access objects. Of course, you can just focus on the macros and there you go. But I'll click on the drop down and we'll say all. And then go ahead and close out of here. And then to run it, just double click on it and it will open up the contact form. Double click. Is that the contact form? Wait, FRM contact, FRM contact. Yay, it works. Let's go ahead and close out. But keep in mind that when you want to edit it, you might be thinking old school, like, hey, I open this up to go ahead and get into the data sheet view. Well, when you want to edit the tables, you right click to go to the design, but you know, sometimes I get caught double clicking and going, oh, I need to go to the design. Well, the macro, if you double click on it and it's something you don't intend to have it automatically run, then don't do it. Right click on it and open up in the design, make your tweakages, your changes, and then go ahead and save it and close out so you can run it at a later time or, you know, not trying to run it when you just need to make some design changes. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, 
please see the description below this video.